Just got done editing this interview. You guys are gonna love it. Before I do that though, I want you to know that I'm going to be in the comments for the next 30 minutes or so answering your questions. If there's additional questions you want me to ask the CEO next time I interview them, leave them below. Or if you're just loving the data points I get CEOs to share, click the thumbs up button below. That's your way of telling me you're loving this stuff and I'll get you more of it. Additionally, again, I'll be in the comments answering any questions you have. All right, for 30 minutes, enjoy the interview. Hello everyone, my guest today is Nick Hollinger with a company called Visitor Q. He's the CEO and founder, and really what they're focused on is a B2B SaaS company that have partnered recently with Google Analytics to identify the companies visiting a website. They're bootstrapped, uh, currently works with 5,000 companies across the globe, also the game day director of one of Canada's most successful junior hockey teams. Nick, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right, so Visitor Q, what's the partnership with Google look like, and why is that unique to you? Uh, the partnership really ties into their Google Analytics uh, APIs uh, and allows us to gather information about uh, from Google Analytics about the companies visiting another company's website, allows us to, uh, to integrate easily with any website because uh, most websites across uh, the globe have uh, Google Analytics attached to, to their website uh, already. So getting set up is super easy. Uh, and uh, really adds a benefit for us. You don't have to add any code to your website or anything. I mean, is this basically an IP address hits your website? You do some back channel, some data enrichment, and figure out what company it is. You got it. Yeah, and then we provide that to uh, B two B companies so they can follow up with the ones that don't convert. Okay, so I'm on GetLaka.com. I am trying to close more uh, founders to pay for my data. Uh, an IP address hits me. They don't sign up, so I don't capture their email. But you send me an email and say, hey, you just got a visit from IP address 193-615-6111. It's company X. How do I go to actually reaching out to them? Do you give me an email or what? Yeah, we would provide you with firmographic information. So uh, a phone number that uh, would be included in that. Uh, so you could give them a cold call or we also provide the, the key contacts there. So the key employees that you could say, hey, uh, we would probably sell to the marketing director or uh, someone in information. So I want to follow up directly with them. OK, where are you getting your firmographic data? Are you paying kind of full contact or discover org or what's your, what are your sources there? Uh, full contact is our number one source there, but we use another we, uh, m- like most data is commodity at this point. So we're pretty much sourcing it off of each other. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, the secret about the space is basically everyone buys everyone else's data. And then sometimes you have your own engineering team that adds your, a little bit of your own flavor, but it's generally all the same. Correct. Yeah, we do have a, a team that we work with, an outsource team that uh, will go through and uh, enrich any records and so on. Uh, but generally, uh, most of it's coming from full contact for so the firmographic. What's your full time uh, full time team size today? Uh, about eight full-time equivalent. Okay. Um, that is six full-time and then a few contractors here or there. Okay. How many engineers? Uh, that's three engineers. And any quota carrying sales reps? Uh, no, most of our, so our ARPU is at a level where, uh, it doesn't really make sense to have a, an outbound team. Or, what or what level is that? Uh, $75, uh, uh, per month. Per month. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, so you're going really after a mass market play, yeah. not an enterprise. Exactly. Yeah. Everything's marketing driven. Everything's inbound. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting. So 75 bucks a month. Now, when did you launch the company? Uh, so post revenue as of April, 2018, uh, started working on the original idea about June of 2017. Between 2017 and your first dollar revenue, how much did you sink into the MVP? Oh, that was probably all of my, uh, money that went into that and burned a bit of money there, but Probably closer to 15, 20 grand. Okay. Um, I mean, and, and so that was mostly your money or did you raise angel stuff early on? No, uh, completely bootstrapped. Nothing outside of my my uh, my finances or a personal guarantee that I put on a loan has gone into the company. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so I mean, most people, that's the hardest part, right? Is getting the initial cash to get started. So it sounds like you took a loan out from a bank and, and per- personal guaranteed it? Uh, no, I was fresh out of school. I had some cash that I'd saved up. Uh, and put that into the company to get started. I found a co-founder who had the technical piece that we needed uh, so we could really do this thing uh, incredibly uh, cost-effective. Uh, and then once we started uh, hitting some uh, revenue uh, and, and finding those growth channels that we needed, we uh, went and got uh, a loan from uh, what's in Canada. It's called the Business Development Bank of Canada. Uh, and they do business loans for, for smaller companies uh, and take a personal guarantee on them. Uh, but that was already after we had revenue to to kind of increase our marketing spend. That that loan, how much was it for? Uh, forty five grand. Okay, forty five k. And and so okay, so that's a that's your original story. That's how you get some of your momentum going. Um, how did you get your first customers? Where did you find them? Uh, first customers. Ooh, that was that was a bit. I have a terrible memory, but I'll try to I'll try to go back that far. 
Uh, so it won't be not far. It's only two years ago. <laughs> yeah, I barely remember what I had for dinner last night. Um, so the the first customers were mainly just us testing channels. Uh, we used uh, we used different uh, Google Analytics, uh, sorry, Google AdWords, Facebook, uh, all these different channels to actually um, to actually you uh, generate signups on our beta. Uh, and then we also reached out to friends that we had within the industry and got a few customers. So that like way what start. keyword early on worked really well for you or actually tell me like the real channel that the first couple customers came from. Uh, so the first ones would have been Google AdWords for the most part. We tested out a bunch in the, in the beta uh, that we had and we signed up about a thousand accounts in the beta. So uh, we use a number uh, of different channels and for AdWords, it would be website visitor identification. Would be it would be a big one for us. Uh, Product Hunt drove us a ton of different signups. I, I uh, would recommend anyone launching if you need some uh, if you need some people to test out your product. Definitely use Product Hunt. Mm-hmm. What when did you launch on Product Hunt? Uh, that would have been December of 2017, I think. I believe something along right. those lines. Yeah, November December. You got 86 upvotes. Do you remember how many impressions the website got that day? I don't. To okay. be honest, I know that that to date has probably driven about 300 signups. Uh, and those trickle in as they go. Uh, but most of those would have been uh, around the first week that we launched a product on. Yep. And when you say signups, you mean trialing accounts or paid customers? Uh, that's trialing accounts. Okay. And how many paid customers are you working with now today? Uh, currently 300. 300. Okay. That's pretty healthy, right? So, so how many, I guess each month, right? So we just finished October out. How many new trials did you have? And then how many convert to paid typically? Yeah, so we uh, about 250 last month, and then uh, we added about 30 new customers last month, uh, like actually paying ones. Um, the big thing there is we don't see a, our average conversion is about 45 days uh, for, for an account to convert. Uh, so the ones that were converting last month would have been signups in, what is it, that August, uh, late September at that point, yeah. So 300 customers at a $75 RPU puts you at about $22,000 a month right now in revenue? You got it, yeah. And, and that's up from what, about a year ago? So November of 2018, we were at about three grand in uh, in MRR. Okay, good, so the growth is working. What now, you talked to us about your early channels, Google AdWords, what are your, what channels are working nicely today? Yeah, so in the beginning, we test out a bunch of different channels, as I was saying, like LinkedIn was in there, but it, the, the the cost for a free trial account just wasn't, uh, didn't make, uh, didn't make the cut for a lot of the accounts given our ARPU and our uh, LTV. What were you but, optimizing uh, for? What do you want to get below? Uh, so at the I that at that point we were looking at uh, anywhere from uh, I don't even know I don't remember it, it off the right off the bat, but uh, and I could pull that number up. But um, what we know now is that uh, we have uh, a CAC of about five hundred. Uh, and AdWords plays, plays nicely into that. And so does Facebook and our, and our current channels. Um, but LinkedIn was well above that $500, uh, per month price. Got it. So you need about, you need about 10 trials. You have a 10 percent conversion rate. So to get one new customer, you need 10 trials. And if one new customer's CAC is 500 bucks divided by 10, you're willing to spend about 10 bucks to get a new free trial. Is that right? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. And where are you like last month, where'd you spend the most money direct paid? Uh, AdWords for sure. Google. Yep. And are we talking like a grand, ten grand. Uh, so last month would have been probably around seven thousand. Okay, around so okay, that's a significant portion. Then I call it twenty-ish percent of your revenue. Have you are you raising capital to do more of that? Uh, so not currently. So uh, we're pretty much self. We've almost broken even. Uh, we almost broke even last month for the first time, uh, as close as we've gotten last w- was last month. The the plan moving forward, and we just uh, got some financing through ClearBank. Are you familiar with them? You always talk about. Uh, venture debt and they're a form of venture debt. Uh, so we just tried a loan with them that just came through about a week ago now uh, for $14,000. Uh, and then we're going to test that out and see kind of how it how it uh, plays with our cash flow uh, and then look to probably raise some more venture debt as we go. Nothing and significant though. What's the fee they charge on the $14,000? Uh, it's a 6% fee. It's actually weird. It's a 12.5% fee with a 6.5% uh, cash back. That you get once you've fully uh, spent the, the 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 full fourteen grand. Got over what period of time? Uh, w- when do we have to spend the money? Yeah, or? like let's say you get the fourteen k a week ago, right? When do you have to pay the fourteen? They model it, I think, based off percent of your ad spend or percent yeah, so of they revenue. Take, uh, they take revenue, so ten percent top line revenue uh, every month, 
or every, sorry, every transaction from Stripe actually. So they're pretty much taking it daily at this point. Uh, we're scheduled to pay that back probably within six months based off cash flow projections. Um, but we're scheduled to spend that within the first probably three months or so where that they, we could then go to them and look for more of a top up in that regard. Yeah. So just to be clear, right? Cause a lot of people mess this up with clear bank just cause of how they market it, which is fine, but a 12.5% fee and a 6.5% cash back when it's paid back on a six month term is an effective APR of closer to 25%, right? Um, now when you, if you, I'm not, I, I need to understand more about how the cash back works, but it sounds like how quickly do you have to spend that money to get the cash back? Uh, before we actually, uh, hit our full, t- before we paid it back currently. So essentially we have six months to, uh, pay it back. We're scheduled to use all that cash within the first three. Got it. So they want you to use the cash in the first three. And if you do that, or if you use it, any, if you use up all the cash, basically they don't want you to under, un- they don't want to have capital committed to you that you then don't utilize. Right. So correct. You've already paid them back and you have this capital sitting on their card. Yeah. 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 So, so they want you to spend the full 14 grand in the six months, the scheduled payback period. And if you do that, basically your interest goes down by 600 points. Exactly. They give you, they give you a 6% interest rate and effectively APR is what you would look at 12% give or take there. Yeah. Something like that. And the, and the, ri- and I guess the, The downside there is that is about half of your current MRR. So if you wanted a bigger, I mean, do you think they could give you a hundred thousand dollar loan? They capped us at 30 grand uh, for their options, but they would be taking 20% off top line at that point in regards to how quickly they're recovering. Uh, Yeah. So we were, we were more comfortable at the 10% to start to see how it affects our cash flow. uh, And if there is anything else that was hidden in there that we didn't uh, find in regards to how they're lending. Uh, but what we found was there isn't many lenders that for the capital we were looking for at, uh, our MRR. Usually it's about 500 in ARR, uh, or more. That's where we could start uh, going to these other lenders, especially within Canada. Uh, but, uh, below 500, we didn't find many, but in clear bank was, uh, one of them that was willing at that rate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if someone offered you like espresso doesn't go down this far to me, a Hercules CIBC, all these guys, you're too yeah. small for them. But if you got a term loan, let's say someone give you $50,000, you could pay it back over three years at an effective rate of like call it 16 or 17%. Um, how would you think about that in terms of the clear bank deal? Uh, like you're, you're talking like if we went and raised like a, went to an angel and got them to pretty much loan us the 50 grand rather than taking an equity stake. Is yeah. That, is well, that- it doesn't matter who you get it from, but you, you're, let's say you get $50,000 and the way you pay it back is on a three year term at something like an effective interest rate of 18%. So it's not of your revenue. That's an 18% on whatever yeah, yeah, capital yeah. is outstanding, yeah. like a mortgage Sorry, almost. Up there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We would be open to something like that. Uh, if any of your list listeners are out there or looking at uh, different uh, or are looking at lending, we would definitely be definitely reach out because we're interested in hearing what our options are. Would 50 K ish be the right amount you think, or you want less or more? Uh, probably more after we figure out uh, what clear bank was able to do for us. Cause we're, we're still testing, right? Like uh, we seven grand was an increase seven grand in ad spend for uh, Google AdWords was an increase from five the month before and still seeing how an increase. Cause if, if well, do they require that you spend the 14 grand on AdWords, is that part of the deal? Uh, part of it is, uh, it's not just AdWords, but they do give you a pretty much a virtual credit card, which can be put towards specific, uh, channels. Can you increase your salary? <laughs> no, I still pay myself like garbage. Can you uh, hire two more engineers using clear bank money? Not clear bank money. No, they, they do allow you to submit an invoice, but I believe those are, it's more for the, if those, if they were to accept that invoice that you submitted, uh, they would use it towards, uh, they would use it toward, they would want it to be towards a marketing channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you built on Stripe? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, talk to me about economics, right? So gross revenue turn over the past 12 months. Uh, so I have gross, re- I have net. If okay, that's, yeah, uh, what's net? Yeah, I have net uh, for the last 12 months was about 12, uh, 12%. Uh, we haven't cracked that 100% mark, but given that we're within small to medium business, we uh, were comfortable, but still looking at ways to, uh, optimize. So, so, so net revenue churn annually is 12% or retention, yep. the inverse about 88%. You got it. That's correct. Do you yeah. have meaningful expansion revenue or no? Uh, it, no, not on a, not on a monthly basis. We're not seeing that, that number where we want to, the, the, uh, the leverage isn't there at this point, but we're looking at different ways to, to optimize that. And are you profitable right now or burning cash? 
Uh, so net burn last month was probably two or three grand. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're, we're happy with that. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, but that probably means that I need to go find some more money to spend. Right. Uh, <laughs> if I want to keep growing it. Yeah. I like that. Very good. All right. So doing, uh, do, doing, uh, doing about 22 grand a month, 270,000 bucks in terms of ARR run rate today, burning caught three grand, six folks on the team. Sounds healthy. What, what's the next test you're going to run? Uh, more money towards the channels we know uh, work. And that's part of the clear bank test we're doing right now. Uh, and after that 14 grand's gone, uh, look at additional ways that we can optimize those channels, uh, but also spend more towards them. Yep. All right, let's wrap up here, Nick, with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Uh, I'm going to be typical and go hard thing about hard things. Number two, you must listen to the show a lot. Oh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> Do you like it? Is there anything you wish I asked oh, yeah. that I don't? Um, I'm actually curious why you're asking the finance question now, like what payment platform they're using. <laughs> is that, is that a play you have going on? We don't have to discuss we'll, it now. If you- we'll, we'll, we'll definitely chat afterwards. Let's just say okay. this. Let's just okay. say this. Um, I think ARR is a real asset. Uh, and I think that it should be valued like an asset. And I think you can lend against that as an asset. And I think right now, most of the options in the marketplace are taking advantage of entrepreneurs and they're way too expensive. Yeah, I like that. Okay, yeah. cool. We'll talk after. Yeah. All right. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, my aunt actually from get around, she's not the C, uh, CEO anymore. She just stepped down, but, uh, Jessica Scorpio. Scorpio, Very good. Uh, number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your company? Uh, I'm going to say Google analytics. I'm a big metrics nerd and I love to see the attribution side. So Google analytics is uh, definitely my favorite. Number four, how many hours of sleep you get every night? Uh, a healthy seven, seven. Okay, good. And uh, what's your situation? Married, single kids? Uh, when is this episode airing? <laughs> In about six or six to 12 months from now, six to 12 months. So definitely it's going to be a fiance at that point. Okay. Um, and, uh, no kids at all. Very cool. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we do actually, we don't want to spoil that, that thing. We'll make sure we release the six to 12 months. Yeah. When's that happening? When's the, when's the uh, big proposal? Within the month, within the month. Ooh, yeah. exciting. Nick, that's very yeah. exciting. Is she, are they kind of in the entrepreneur world as well? Uh, no, she's a, a dental hygienist. Oh, good. Some diversity. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Keeps me balanced. <laughs> How old yeah. are you? Uh, 24. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, so four years ago, uh, don't take yourself so seriously. We're all floating on a rock through space and none of it matters anyway. So, so don't take yourself so seriously. Guys, there you have it. VisitorQ.com, helping you understand which IP addresses are hitting your website so you can do follow-up and kind of account-based marketing. Doing, call it $22,000 per month right now in revenue, up from three grand a month just a year ago. So call it 650% year-over-year growth. Obviously, easy to multiply small numbers, but they're scaling nicely. 300 customers paying on average $75 per month. They have not raised any money, burning, call it two, three grand a month. Six folks on the team, 12% gross revenue churn, no expansion for 88% net revenue retention. Payback period on their CAC of about 500 bucks is just seven months. So healthy economics all around. Nick, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. These CEOs rarely give these kinds of interviews. I hit them hard, I get the data, and I want to do it more. So if you want to get more of this stuff, make sure you subscribe up here. And then additionally, go check out one of my other CEO interviews right now.